What happened with the group right. of CCG? Well, um, <clears throat> CCG, um, just to keep it 100, I mean, CCG goes back to the early 90s. You know what I'm saying? Um, it, it, we, <clears throat> excuse me, literally in the beginning, we were like the Wu-Tang Clan. I mean, it was probably like 20 of us. We was the whole clique, you know what I mean? Um, we, uh, but, you know, it, it dwindled down to just me and Cisco, you know what I'm saying? I met Cisco uh, my ninth grade year uh, in high school. Uh, we met up at uh, Lincoln uh, in Kansas City, Missouri. And, um, uh, and you know, we just hit it off right off the back. I mean, we both had that same drive. We had that same uh, tenacity. And we were both dreamers in terms of when it came to music. Um, honestly, Cisco was the creative force behind CCG. Um, he, he did all the music. He wrote all the verses. He conceptualized all the songs. Uh, not, not that he wrote all the verses, but he would basically come to me with, you know, songs with just, he already did the beat. He already came up with the concept. He did his verse and all I needed to do was fill in the verse and write mine. You know what I mean? So that's how we, he was always the creative force. I was more or less kind of like the face and the, the mouthpiece of the group. Um, yeah. And so, you know, we were together uh, all the way up into, I mean, you know, we started out as friends. And mind you, that's still my brother. I still talk to Cisco. So um, shout out to Cisco. Um, but, you know, when we got with P, man, it was a situation where it, it, it put me in a really funny dynamic. Um, because um, what had happened was by the time when I made contact with P, me and P, we talked on the phone like damn near every day. Uh, for probably two months up until the time that he actually flew us out to California. So what had happened was me and P, we developed a rapport. We developed a relationship. So by the time we seen each other, you know, we wasn't complete strangers. We kind of knew each other. Um, again, like I said before, you know, I talked to everybody. I handled all the business. This boat never talked to Master P one time. You know what I mean? But he knew he was a brute, but he just never talked to him. And so at the time, we had a manager. Um, our manager at the time, he didn't know a whole lot, but he knew a little bit more than us. He was older than us at the time. So, um, so basically, and, and the, the dynamic with that was is Cisco, him and Cisco kind of clicked and they got along and being the manager, it was, it was almost the same, like with me and Pete, with him and the manager, you know, like him and the manager, they talked and they clicked and me and the manager really did talk. You see what I'm saying? So it was like they had more of a rapport, like I had more of a rapport with Pete. So when we got out to uh, California, you know, um, man, listen, I mean, Cisco, you know, he has a strong personality, you know what I'm saying? And and just, you know, truth be told, him and Pete just didn't get along. They just did not mix. Pete didn't like him, and he didn't really too much care for Pete, to be honest with you. And, um, and Pete made it be known. And he let it be known, you know, to me. He was like, man, I don't want to do this shit. He was like, you know, I, I'm cool on this No Limit shit. I can go back to Kansas City. And the thing about it was the manager at the time, he was on Cisco's side. He was like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah man, y'all just come on back. That ain't for y'all. So you see the di you see the dilemma it put me in because it's like, damn, this is my yeah. friend. You know what I'm saying? You know, kind of like a childhood friend is my, my group mate. But at the same time, me and P is good. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I don't see it like y'all see it. You see what I'm saying? So, and you got to understand, I'm like 17, 18 years old at that time, trying to make that type of decision, you know, and I come from a, a gang culture too. So, so to an extent, you know how it goes. It's like, well, shit, you know, I kind of, cause P asked me to go solo. P wanted me to go solo, but I wasn't, I wasn't confident enough at the time. You know what I'm saying? Cause as I said before, Cisco, was the creative force. He was the one that, that, that did everything. And I just did my verses after he did everything. So I really, you know, and, and, and I can't say to be honest with you, which obviously I didn't do it, but you know, I come from a gang culture. So it, I was kind of on some PU, my nigga, you know what I'm saying? But I came with him. I kind of got to leave with him. You know what I'm saying? It got to be both of us. If it, you know what I'm saying? Now, you know, you fast forward to, you know, once I became an adult, and from an adult space and a more informed, mature space, I would have handled that situation differently. You know what I'm saying? I would have told, you know, Cisco, uh, hey, check this out, bro. You know, I'm going to go ahead and go do this thing. 
but, you know, stay cool and wait right here, and I'm going to pull you in. You know what I'm saying? Once I get my feet planted good. Uh, but, you know, 17, 18-year-old kid with no reference point of really how to handle that situation, you know, I did what came natural, and I stayed true to my partner and, you know, did it independently, which I'm not mad at that either because although we didn't get the, you know, the the, the fame, obviously, and, and the accolades uh, being, you know, act to actually, you know, from actually putting out a record on No Limit, we made a lot of money independently. You know what I'm saying? So it's still, you know, we didn't really miss out on nothing for real, at least the shit that counts, you know. And then I came full circle right back to Pete. So me and Pete never lost contact. See, that's the thing. Me and Pete always maintained a relationship to the degree that when I was putting out them court dog albums and putting out uh, those records, like he used his influence to have uh, Southwest and, you know, certain distributors basically pay me up front for my product. You know what I'm saying? So if I if I pressed up, you know, thirty, forty thousand, you know, they was cashing me out seven dollars a CD up front because of his connections. You know what I mean? So a lot of people don't know that, but you know, that's the thing, man. Like we were still, you know, we were still connected. And then once we both moved out to LA about twenty years ago, that's when we reconvened and, you know, got back on the day to day kicking it. Me and Pete. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications. Like, comment, share. Also go over to UGSForLife.com, download the entire archive, and check out new episodes on Apple Podcasts and Blog Talk Radio.